And now it's time for Madison's Mad Facts with your host, Madison Standish. Hey, everybody. It's Madison. Welcome to another Madison on the Air bonus feature of Madison's Mad Facts, where we look at the way things were in real life during these old-timey radio shows. It's December, and the holiday season is in full swing, including our Christmas episode featuring the show Candy Matson, Yukon 28209. Spoilers ahead, no peeking at your presents early. Go listen to the episode first. So, the plot of our Candy Matson episode involved a Santa's helper, Jack Frost, who is essentially a department store Santa Claus. So for this episode of Madison's Mad Facts, we're going to talk about the tradition not of Santa Claus himself, but of department store Santas. And with us to chat about these sweaty laps of luxury items is Paul Arbisi, the voice of Prentice Burke, our department store manager. Hey, Paul. Sup? How you doing, Madison? Hey, I'm just getting ready for the holiday season and here to talk a little bit about Santa Claus. I usually get ready for the holidays by changing out my Halloween Starbucks Traveler's mug for my Christmas Starbucks Traveler's mug. Pumpkin spice lattes make way for eggnog lattes. So, I want to start by saying that in our Candy Matson episode, they have Jack Frost as the one who kids sit on his lap and tell what they want for Christmas. We could not find any research to show anyone actually did that. Apparently, it was completely made up for the radio show. And I even guess in the episode that maybe NBC, who aired Candy, couldn't get the rights to Santa or something. No clue. If anyone out there knows anything about Jack Frost being used as Santa's helper, we'd love to hear from you. So, okay, let's start at the beginning, Paul. Tell us about what led up to the very first department store Santa Claus. Oh, children throughout the 1800s were told about Santa Claus. In fact, the poem, "'Twas the Night Before Christmas, depicting a visit from jolly old St. Nick, was published in 1823 and starting in the 1820s, stores used illustrations of Santa Claus in their advertising. So, Santa has always been a corporate show? Well, it's definitely not something new. By the 1840s, newspapers were creating entire holiday sections featuring Santa Claus, and in 1841, a store in Philadelphia put up a life-size statue of St. Nick, which drew children from all over, wanting to get a glimpse of their holiday hero. When did Santa become an actual dude in a suit? Hmm. Uh, Well, the first man to dress up as Santa Claus came in 1890. A dry goods store owner named James Edgar, who lived outside of Boston in the town of Brockton, Massachusetts, had a specially made Santa Claus costume tailored for himself. He modeled it after the cover, drawn by Thomas Nast from an 1862 Harper's Weekly magazine, portraying St. Nick as the fat and jolly old elf. Up until then, children had no chance of meeting St. Nick. He always seemed to elude them while they slept on Christmas Eve. But now, James Edgar had made children's dreams a reality. His publicity stunt drew children to the small Massachusetts town from all over New England and as far away as New York City. And by 1891... Department stores all over the country were supplying their own Santa. But James Edgar wasn't just a marketing genius. His store really embodied the spirit of Santa Claus, right? Oh, actually, yeah. Uh, Brockton was once known as a shoemaking town, but in the 1920s, much of the industry had dried up. Uh, Truant officers employed at the time to monitor children who had stopped attending school uh, discovered the reason so many kids were skipping their education was purely because their families couldn't afford to provide shoes for them. The truant officers appealed to the then president of the late Mr. Edgar's department store, uh, a William Wright. Wright sprung into action. He closed down the top floor of the store and bought a $3,000 shoe repair machine. And in 1920s money, three grand is a lot. Exactly. Wright hired a half a dozen cobblers, and by Christmas they had repaired over a thousand pairs of shoes in what was dubbed the James Edgar Shoe Shop. By spring they had repaired 5,000 shoes and gave them all away for free. Now, there is some dispute about James Edgar being the one who created the first live-action Santa Claus. Talk about Macy's. Well, 
Macy's does have vague claims that their New York store first offered a Santa Claus as early as 1862. This is much debated because the accounts are not very well documented, and Macy's themselves have repeatedly refused to give a statement on this claim to anyone trying to research the subject. They brag about have having had a Santa for 160 years and have said it enough that people have accepted it as fact. But what most historians have been able to legitimately verify is that James Edgar was the first address in what we now universally agree is the official Santa Claus garb. A red suit with white trim, stocking cap, boots, and a big white beard. Macy's is recounted as having a person in costume, but not looking like Santa as we know him today. Also, James Edgar was the first to make his Santa an interactive event for children. It is well documented that Edgar did this throughout the year as various fun characters. So adding Santa was already a natural step for him. Macy's did not implement Santa Land, as they call it today, until decades later. So chances are the Santa they had before Edgar was merely a greeter in a holiday costume. Sorry, I'm married. I'm not used to talking this much. That's the benefit of a small recording booth. (laughs) So, Macy's. Besides Santa Land, they famously aligned themselves with Santa with their parade and Miracle on 34th Street. Ah, uh, right. In 1924, Macy's did officially implement the Santa suit as we know it today, and that year, the first year of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, began featuring St. Nick as the last float in the parade, thus officially launching the beginning of the holiday season. Then, in 1947, Hollywood furthered the store's association with the Jolly Old Elf by featuring them as the department store and not only had a Santa, but the real Santa. Okay, so in these Mad Facts, we like to talk about the period of time during which these old-timey radio shows aired. What was Santa like back then? Yeah, if you start in the 1930s, it was actually 1931 when Coca-Cola began their infamous campaign utilizing Santa Claus. He was still based on the Thomas Nast drawing, but over the years, that depiction had had many color versions of Santa's suit. So Coca-Cola, already branded with the colors of red and white, truly solidified the colors of Santa's suit that we see everywhere today. One ad depicted a department store Santa Claus taking a break and enjoying a Coke. And from then on, Santa Claus and Coca-Cola became linked forever. What about during World War II? Well... During the war, Santa was still a welcoming lap, ready to fulfill dreams for kids trying to keep a semblance of normalcy in their lives. Rationing, however, led Santa's gift to be more practical, with items like soap being the most received gifts, and Santa, naturally on the side of the Allies, kept kids patriotic by promoting war bonds. As for department store Santas, while the country saw women stepping in traditional roles across all professions as soldiers were sent abroad to fight, Santa Claus was no exception. The first Mrs. Claus was introduced by the store Philines in Boston as early as 1906, but during the war years donned the garb of St. Nick himself, and it wasn't without controversy. Many of the typical voices condemning women who stepped out of traditional roles openly objected. But with the shortage of men, department stores were happy to have these Lady Santas. Then what happened after the war and into the 1950s? And after World War II, America moved into the baby boom era. It was called the baby boom era for a reason. Soldiers were coming home and starting families so that by the 1950s, kids and Christmas were a major event. Most of the holiday traditions we still observe today blossomed in the 1950s. However, what should be noted is that in the 1950s was the first introduction of the department stores hiring black Santa Clauses. While the ever-expanding suburbs drew more white families away from the city, urban stores turned their focus on their primary customers and hired black Santa Clauses to entertain the kids. Naturally, it was a huge hit, and would later, during the Civil Rights Movement in the 1960s, become a symbol of black empowerment. Well, thank you so much, Paul, for talking with us about the history of old-timey department store Santa Clauses. Ho, ho, ho. (laughs) Well, thanks, Madison. Uh, It's time to go make some cookies and heat up some uh, hot chocolate and maybe put a little (laughs) in the eggnog, if you know what I mean. 
Oh, I know what you mean. I've already had a platter of rum balls. Have a happy holiday season and see all you kids in 2022. Bye. Thank you guys for listening to our bonus feature of Madison's Mad Facts. And get ready for new episodes of Madison on the Air to premiere the first of every month. Merry Holidays!